Leslie Huntington guided University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire to the NC2A Division III National Championship in 2008 after a third place national finish the previous spring. Earning her 500th career win in 2021, the four-time Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Coach of the Year has compiled a 521, 278, and two record over the past 20 seasons. As an assistant coach under NFCA Hall of Famer Henry Kristowski, she helped Simpson College to a pair of Division III national titles and two runner-up finishes. As a player for NFCA Hall of Famer Marge Willardson at Buena Vista University, Huntington was a national runner-up in Division III softball in 1992. Huntington also currently provides instruction to young players through various local fast pitch programs and her own blue gold fast pitch camps and clinics, and also has her own consulting business, More Than a Game Performance. At this time, please enjoy this video highlighting the career of Leslie Huntington. Les, congratulations on your induction into the NFCA Hall of Fame. I am so proud of you and your accomplishments. I am so proud that I got to coach you. You will cherish this night forever, so soak it in and enjoy every minute. One thing I want you to remember is that as you get to be my age, the thing you will remember the most are the friendships that you made through this great game of ours. And those are what are special. Leslie, we've played against each other, we've coached against each other, and we see each other at the convention every year and discuss the ways we can make softball better for our teams and as ourselves as coaches. It really has been an honor to have known you and seen you grow as a coach, your players, play the game with integrity and heart, and that's because of your leadership. At the conventions, you inspire me to be a better coach, and I know you have an impact on everyone you come in contact with. Congratulations on your induction to the NFCA Hall of Fame. Hello, Leslie. Congratulations on your well-deserved nomination to the Coaches Hall of Fame. Your hard work and dedication to the coaching of fast pitch softball and to the players you've coached has earned you this honor. It seems like only yesterday that we were working together at Simpson College. I will never forget those years or what you meant to the success we enjoyed. Best wishes. I'm very proud of you and your accomplishments. This recognition couldn't be awarded to a more deserving person. Hi Leslie, I just want to congratulate you on your induction into the NFCA Hall of Fame. It's been an honor to play against you and your teams the past 20 years, as I know it's always going to be a great battle between a well-coached team that's made up of classy individuals who play the game right. I think one of the coolest moments in my career was meeting you at home plate during the national championship game in 2008. I mean, look at us. We were just a tad younger back then. I've always appreciated your friendship both on and off the field, and I respect how hard you work and everything that you do. So I just want to say congrats again, Leslie. Leslie, you Hall of Famer, you. Woohoo! We're excited to be able to congratulate you on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. You deserve it. Um, we are just so grateful that we've had 20 years to be part of, of um, watching you coach and play and what you've done with the team. Um, it's, it's been an exciting part of our lives. Congratulations, Coach Huntington, on your induction into the Hall of Fame. It is so well deserved. Your historic career 
is second to none. Uh, between your longtime assistant Robin Baker and you, you've built something tremendous, a national power here at UW-Eau Claire. It's, I've been a, it's been my pleasure to be the athletic director and your colleague and watching you work and watching the influence that you've made over uh, with hundreds of young women in the sport of softball. Um, I wish you nothing but great success. You're not done yet though at Eau Claire, so, um, but congratulations into your Hall of Fame and uh, we'll see you back on campus. Leslie, you and I came to UW Eau Claire just about the same time, so we've known each other for quite some time. I think we both looked a lot younger then. Uh, but what I've really appreciated and valued about you since I've known you is your passion as not only a competitor and a coach, but your passion for student success. You have very high standards and you hold yourself to the highest of those standards. And yet you've also been willing to um, lead by example and also show your students that by hard work and determination and a commitment to quality that you can achieve great things. The highlight for me was uh, watching your team fly home from that national championship and, and bringing home the national championship title. And I thought to myself then, and I think to it today, I couldn't have wished that for uh, a better person and a better coach than you. Uh, we are so proud of you at UW-Eau Claire and in your accomplishments and your success. And uh, we love it that you're a blue gold. Congratulations. Congratulations to Coach Leslie Huntington on a remarkable 21 seasons here at UW-Eau Claire. You are UW-Eau Claire's all-time winningest softball coach with more than 500 career wins, the two highest finishes in school history, including a national championship. You are a great coach, but maybe most importantly, you're a great colleague. You have the respect of your fellow coaches, all student athletes, faculty and staff, and students at UW-Eau Claire. We're so proud to call you one of our own. Go Blue Golds. Congratulations, Leslie. Being by your side all these years has been a true privilege. You lead your team with the core values of our softball program. You believe in them, you love them, you unify them, you're grateful for every day that you're with them, you own the good and the bad, you're leaving your legacy, you're disciplined in your words and your actions, and you're selfless by being there for them at all times. You earn this honor, and I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium 2021 NFCA Hall of Fame inductee, Leslie Huntington. Well, sitting at this table um, for a while is uh, kind of felt like that hitter that wants to take 200 swings just before game time to fix it. Um, and it's kind of like, okay, that's pointless. <laughs> Let's just play the game. Let's just play the game. Um, oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm standing here. Um, and I'm going to be emotional. So um, we're going we're gonna to roll with it. First of all, I'd, I'd like to thank God for the blessed life and the blessed career that I've had because without him none of this is possible. I'd like to let, thank Carol and the entire NFCA staff for doing such an incredible job year after year but especially in the last two years not only keeping our organization alive but thriving in what we've all been through in the last two years. I'd like to thank the NFCA, the Hall of Fame Committee, for selecting me for this incredible honor. I am beyond humbled and grateful. And congratulations to the other inductees tonight. It's truly an honor to stand up here with you. I want to thank the game. The game has provided so many opportunities. I was on my first airplane because of softball. The first time I ever traveled overseas, the only time I've traveled overseas, 
but the first time I traveled overseas was because of softball. I've been surrounded by greatness my entire career and have just had immeasurable opportunities because of this game. I want to thank UW-Eau Claire and Blue Gold Athletics. Softball at UW-Eau Claire has been a big deal because we've wanted to be big where we are. I took a play out of Hutch's book a few years ago and we got a pep band at a softball game. And another play out of Rhonda Ravel's book and we hold annually the world's largest D3 softball tailgate party. And our parents are so proud of that tradition and it seems like we don't even get our uniforms off at the end of one season and they're asking when next year's tailgate is. So it's just, it's such a privilege to be the coach at UW Eau Claire. I'm honored to have here tonight from UW Eau Claire our Director of Athletics, Dan Schumacher, and our Chancellor, Jim Schmidt. Thank you so much for making the effort and taking the time to be here tonight. It's appreciated, and I'll never forget it. I want to thank Marilyn Scrivseth, who hired me at UW Eau Claire. She was the athletic director, and her vision and passion for women's athletics was just absolutely palpable. She worked tires, tirelessly for the university and for our athletic department. And I believe she, she was the AD that brought our, the first Division III National Softball Championship to our campus. And that was an exciting time. I also want to thank Deb Stewart and Joellen Bailey, who a lot of you probably don't know, but they were the coaches at UW-Eau Claire prior to me becoming the head coach. I knew them personally prior to getting the job at UW-Eau Claire, and they believed in me and supported me and advocated for me to become the head coach. And it meant so much to me, and every day as a Blue Gold, I've worked to make them proud. One of my proudest moments was about three years ago, Joellen came back to campus because one of their softball players was being inducted into our Blue Gold Hall of Fame. And while she was there, I had an opportunity to take her out and show her all the improvements that had been made at the field. We are actually the only sport on our campus that actually has our own facility that we get to practice and play at. And we, when I first came to UW Eau Claire, we played at a city park. And so re rescheduling games and having to work with three or four high schools just to reschedule a game and then not practicing where we played was a challenge. Well, now we have our own field. We get to practice there, we get to play there. And I took Joellen out to the field and we walked around looking at the improvements. I talked to her about my vision for the, the finishing touches that we wanted to put on things and a tear rolled down her face. And it was one of the proudest moments that I've had as a blue gold. I wanna thank our competitors. In the WIAC, all the coaches and talented players in our league who make it a dogfight every single day. You make us better. And I thank you for your effort and the time that you put in and the commitment that you make to the game of softball. Our non-conference competitors throughout the years that if we, we knew that if we could compete with you and we could beat you, that we were doing good things on the field. It's an honor to compete against you and you all make us better. The other people that have been, so many people that have allowed me to be in their bubble. You saw in the video, my college coach, Marge Willitson. Marge is here tonight. Yeah. And when I was trying to decide where I wanted to go to college, I kind of had ruled BV out because it was about three and a half hours away from home. And Marge called me on the phone one day and I made up some lame excuse, probably that it was, it was financial aid. You know, isn't that one we kind of hear? Um, it was financial aid. That was probably the reason that I wasn't going to go to BV. And then I was talking to my best friend in high school, and I said, you know what? I'm not so sure I should have just said no. I haven't even visited campus. So I called Marge back up, and I said, hey, can I come visit campus? And she said, sure, come on over. So I went and, and visited campus, and I remember being in the car, pulling off, out of the parking lot that afternoon with my parents. And before we even got out of the parking lot, I said, this is where I want to come to school. And so there I was at BV, and there's so many great memories and traditions from being at Buena Vista. It's where I learned one very, very important lesson. Less 
we don't swear on the softball diamond. <laughs> well, Marge, my mom would agree with you on that. In fact, she doesn't think that we should swear anywhere, which I get. But I'm afraid to say that I probably didn't learn that lesson very well. <laughs> when I think about my experience as a college player, the fun, the work, the competition, the trips, spring break, the celebration after big wins, our national runner-up finish my senior year, those are the type of memories that we strive to create for our players at UW-Eau Claire, minus the parties. One of my favorite memories from playing at BV was we played a particular doubleheader and we got swept and we really didn't play very well. Um, it was about a three hour drive back to Storm Lake. And the reason I remember it so vividly is because Marge didn't feed us. <laughs> and as I look back, it's a fond memory because number one, I don't think any of us were gonna starve to death. And number two, we didn't deserve to eat. <laughs> and number three, she would get fired if she did that today. <laughs> but I definitely laugh about that. And I actually tell our players that story. And so it's that, it's that little, you know, motivation. Don't ever play that poorly. Another, um, another person that's had such a huge impact on my career is, is Coach Krastowski at Simpson. Um, the Simpson job was my dream job at, at 23 or 24 years old, and Coach C wasn't full-time on campus. He was a school administrator, so in addition, as I said it was my dream job. I got hired as the head athletic trainer. I was assistant women's basketball coach, assistant softball coach, and was teaching almost every athletic training course in the curriculum. And then I was the go-to for our players during the day. It was my dream job. Now I'm just a coach. <laughs> but what a ride. Kelly Shade, Michelle Fowler, if anybody remembers those names. So many other incredible, talented players who made an, an historic four-year run. I was so blessed to be in the right place at the right time. My favorite memory was a walk-off home run to win a national championship. It was hit by a freshman who had replaced our starting uh, second baseman who had just broken her collarbone about a couple weeks prior to the NCAA tournament. The ironic or really cool thing about that year, 1997, was we won the national championship in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And we were fortunate enough in 1999 to win it again on the same field. I thought that was pretty cool. But because Coach C wasn't on campus, occasionally we had, he had to miss practice. He'd have something come up. And I remember one day we had practice the day before. We had had a game. We hadn't bunted well. And I was in charge. So we bunted and we bunted and we bunted and we had to turn the headlights on on the cars on the field so we could bunt some more but we weren't leaving until we were done bunting um, but there are so many other Hall of Famers and so many colleagues I'm so grateful to call friends who have learned so much from and I've said this before but the smartest thing I ever did was just pay attention to all of you and I'm still paying attention because I still want to beat you our coaching staffs. My current coaching staff is all alums. And I'm so proud of that. My uh, first assistant coach is Abby Place. She just started with us this summer. She finished her playing career in May. And she's attending her very first NFCA convention this week. She's also one of our sport performance coaches in our athletic department. Emily Plannert is an 04 alum. She was a two-sport athlete at UW-Eau Claire. And then Steph Wilchinski is a 2019, 2019 alum. And then Bailey Silman is a part-time student assistant who was a, on the 2021 team. Other assistant coaches who have gone on to become head and assistant coaches in their own programs, and that's something that I'm so very proud of. Rachel Click, the head coach at St. Ben's. Amber Dolman, Sarah Fern, and Carly Christensen are all coaching at UW River Falls. Emily Pomakalski is an assistant coach at Edgewood College. Jenny Hess, who is with AIST. If you want to travel abroad and do it affordably, you need to go see Jenny. 
because that's how I got to travel abroad due to softball and had that opportunity to see Italy and I've never been hotter in my life. But I think there are two things that are a couple of the highest compliments you can get as a coach. One is when alums come back to town and make a point of finding you to say hi. And then the second thing is when former players and or former assistant coaches go on to coach their own teams and their own programs. Obviously our players are a huge part of why I'm standing here tonight. And our definition of family has evolved over the years, but so many of our players become our family. And sometimes we butt heads, but more often than butting heads, they've had a way of getting me to lighten up. In 2008, we had a particular practice. I was trying to get our second baseman to get dirty and dive after balls. And I had, I'm a, I was, I'm a big Pat Summit fan. All her books on my bookshelf in my office, reading all her, reading all her stuff. I have a, a, an autograph of Pat Summit that I actually got in Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series when Tennessee was in it. And I was at the concession stand and I saw Pat Summit. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this Pat Summit, oh my God. I have to go talk to her. So I'm at my, I got my backpack because I'm at the NFCC course at the Women's College World Series and I have my backpack. And I'm like, what the heck do I have in my backpack that she can sign? So I dig out this map of Oklahoma City. <laughs> it's on the back of this piece of paper and I walked up to her and I just fumbled over my words, but somehow I got out, can I have your autograph? And so here I give her this map of Oklahoma City and I flip it over and she signs it and I've got it in a page protector taped on my wall in my office to this day. But I was yelling at my second baseman and I was trying to really positively encourage her, get, to her, get her to dive. I'm trying to get her to dive. And I keep hitting these fungos and I keep extending her, extending her, extending her. And finally I yelled at her, her name is Casey Lysking. And I said, Casey Lice Gang, if you make that play, you'll be an All-American. And the team is all like, what the heck? So they laugh, you know, we go on with practice, finish practice. The next day, we come back for practice. And Casey had gone out to the store, bought a white t-shirt, bought screen printing stuff, had a screen print of Pat Summit that she had photoshopped my UW-Eau Claire visor on her head <laughs> on the front of this t-shirt. And on the back in puff paint, she wrote, make that play and you're an All-American. <laughs> we won the national championship that year and she was a second team All-American. <laughs> But over the years, each group of alums comes back and they hear stories about the current team and they shudder at how soft I've gotten. <laughs> and you know, it's, <laughs> it's not about getting soft. It's really not about getting soft. It's about getting to know your players at a level where you're able to figure out what they need and when they need it. I didn't have the patience for that early in my career. I wanted to win and I wanted to win now. But they say the best coaches are transformational versus transactional. And I would say when transactional coaches become transformed is when they start to figure it out. It's all about the journey of the players, but it's also about our journey as coaches and as human beings. And nobody's journey is the same. The other reason I'm standing up here today is because of my family. A lot of them made it here tonight. And while not an immediate member of the family, Keith Beckstrom is here tonight and he's like family. He's been a source of support in so many ways over the years. He's spoiled me and our players by being at practice almost every day, runs around in the outfield shagging balls, Provides massages. He's a massage therapist, by the way, and he is looking for, uh, you know, paying for his trip. So if anybody needs a massage before he leaves on Sunday, you can look him up. Um, but he's been a, a great source of support. Tim and Sue Rogie, who you saw in the video, 
incredible, incredible support for our program. Travel to Florida with us for spring break. I haven't, I haven't seen the inside of a grocery store in years because of everything that they've done for our program. Making meals for our teams. Um, just unbelievable, and a lot of our success is because of the stress they've taken off the coaching staff because of what they've been able to help us with. I have a bunch of my dad's family here from Idaho tonight, and they're really hoping that I speed this up because we have a party to go to after we're done here. But we didn't grow up close to each other. We were half a country apart growing up, but every time we get together, it feels like we grew up next door. And all of you guys being here tonight is so very special. My cousin Leanne and her husband Dave, their son Matthew, um, my cousin Lisa and her husband Mike. Happy birthday, Mike. <laughs> and my dad's brother, Uncle Gary, and my Aunt Mary Lee. My brother Dusty and my sister-in-law Nikki and my favorite nephews in the world, Koi and Ty. Ty's a senior in high school. He's missing some basketball practices and games by being here this week, and I really appreciate that. He was up in his room studying for his firefighter training exam this afternoon, earlier in the day. Um, but Coy, my oldest nephew, is participating in esports actually at his college, and get this, he's in the top 1% of all Rocket League players in the world. Didn't know you were going to get that shout out, did you? And Ty, in addition to his firefighter training, this past fall, he played every offensive position on his eight-man football team. His last game, he played quarterback, and that, that completed the deal. And he earned all-conference honors on both sides of the ball. Yeah, they got that from me. So they've grown from the cutest bat boys on earth to handsome young men who I'm so proud of. My mom is here tonight, and I'm not sure that she quite learned how to play roulette this week, but that was one of her goals. <laughs> but um, mom's always been the one to kind of hang in the background. She stayed pretty quiet, let me vent when I needed to. She's made quiet, albeit very accurate, observations and then offer up her thoughts minimally. My brother and I kind of refer to her as the silent assassin with her wit, so stay on your toes if you talk to her. But the way my mom was throughout my career and has been is quite the opposite of what my dad would, have, would do. Dad made his thoughts known pretty publicly on a regular basis, and he could often be seen wandering around in the outfield because mom sent him out there when he got too vocal. Isn't it crazy? We have jobs that our parents come and watch us do. <laughs> like, what accountant's parents go to the office and watch them do their job? Oh, but mom and dad didn't get to see me play a whole lot when I was in college. The distance and, and finances were kind of tough, but they definitely made up for it when I became a head coach. Um, they moved to Eau Claire. They would go to Florida with us on spring break came to every home game, occasionally made it to an away game. If they couldn't make it, they were turned, tuned in on Game Changer or video stream. We lost my dad on January 28, 2019, the very first day of softball practice. And I've been asked many times what my reaction was a year ago when this Hall of Fame class was announced. And all I could think about that night was my dad. Despite our Sunday arguments about the Packers and the Vikings and all the headbutting we did when I was growing up, he was my biggest fan. And he was so very proud of his kids and his grandkids, and he loved my mom dearly. And I know he's here tonight. And he's thinking to himself, that's pretty neat. I think I got my love for softball and sports in general from my dad's side of the family. My grandma was a state champion in Iowa in girls basketball in the early 1940s. 
Dad played basketball in high school, found himself playing fast pitch softball in the Army. And I remember him telling me he would get out of some crappy detail and his commanding officer would actually just tell him to go to softball practice. He told the story, this is my favorite story, he told of pitching in a game one day and, and there's some old drunk guy over on the left, uh, first base side leaning against a light pole, just razzing my dad, he's pitching. And it got to a point where dad was like, okay, I've had enough. So on his next pitch, instead of delivering the ball to the plate, he comes across his body and hits the light pole right about the guy's head. <laughs> I don't think he heard another word out of the guy. I remember learning to pitch for my dad in our front yard. We'd pitch back and forth to each other. He'd give me a, his advice. He told me I needed to brush my hip with my pinky as I released the ball. And when I, I became a coach, I needed to teach myself more about pitching. And as I did a lot of research, I started thinking dad didn't really know what he was talking about. But then the more I learned and the more I dug, I learned about a term, brush interference. And I was like, oh, geez, kind of did know what he was talking about. When my dad was in the Army, he was home on leave. Um, let's just say he got into a little tussle with his stepbrother. And the tussle resulted in dad breaking his hand. He had to return to basic training and do his PT testing when he got back. Everyone was concerned that he wouldn't be able to complete his PT test, and his reply was simply, the hell I can't. And this has become our family mantra. And our softball players learn about this type of determination every year. Not only did he complete his PT test, but he finished with the highest score in the class. I couldn't end tonight without publicly thanking the person who I've been so blessed to have by my side for over 20 years, on the field and off the field. Many of you know Robin Baker. And you probably have to agree that to know her is to love her. Robin and I met on the softball field. We competed against each other early on. I remember coaching at Simpson, and she was coaching at Wartburg. And at the time, Simpson was undefeated in conference play and ranked number one in the nation. We split on the final day of the regular season. Robin is the most professional, selfless, caring, compassionate, level-headed servant leader I have ever been around. Her mission is just to make the lives of those she serves better, and she's done that in my life. There's a reason I have her listed as the voice of reason in my cell phone. <laughs> There's nothing better than having your person to celebrate with when we win a big game, and there's nothing better than having your person completely understand you when we lose. This award tonight isn't about me, it's about us because without you, this wouldn't have happened. Thank you for putting up with me. I love you. The after party is in Harris Mountain Tower 6151. Thank you very much.